about a year ago, I started thinking about making a squareness comparator. Um, a lot of it had to do with uh, a lot of the videos I was watching at the time. I saw that this was a pretty popular item and sort of useful, but most of all, it's something that I figured I could make at home. So essentially what I did was uh, copy a design. Um, none of this is really original. I mean, really the whole idea of the comparator is not really unique at all. Um, so, for the most part, um, throughout this video, which is the first part of hopefully a complete series, there's just going to be um, a lot of squaring stock, um, and this is all being done on the Sherline mill. So, um, eventually I do get into um, some other milling putting some chamfers on, drilling some holes. Um, this piece here is just the base, uh, which really doesn't get much more work done um, through this video. So this is the beginning of the post clamp. Um, it actually will clamp to the vertical post that attaches to the base. So I'm just starting off with um, a piece of one inch by three quarter inch uh, piece of um, A2 tool steel. Um, it was already squared off, so really this is just an end cut to establish uh, the overall length. I have to watch on the Sherline mill uh, what my Y travel is uh, because it is very limited. Um, if you noticed earlier, I had uh, a larger grinding vise on the table turned sideways, um, and that was because the the base is too long or wide so it has to be positioned just just at the right spot on the table in order to reach all the features um, but now I have uh, through this operation the the normal Sherline vise back on so it's able to reach the extents of, of all the parts and it actually does a pretty good job of side milling. I'm back to the red layout fluid now. Um, all the blue stuff is gone. Um, laying out is really one of my favorite uh, favorite pastimes in machining. Um, I don't really get to do it ever except for at home and sometimes I just do it for the sake of doing it so this this is uh, touching off the tool um, I really don't use an edge finder much on the sure line um, uh, and a lot of that has to do with the inconvenience of changing the tool out so the the carbide end mill is very accurate and then I, I set it up against the edge and then I'll use the indicator set on the edge of the table to dial in the location which here was 187 and a half I added some of the audio back on in order to get an idea of what this machine actually sounds like as it's cutting now this is just a witness cut so I'm just checking to my scribe line but here's a more substantial cut
So that was about 50 thousandths of an inch. And now here is the other, the other side of this cutout. Again, about 50 thousandths of an inch. Always absolutely conventional milling on this machine. Um, I have, on occasion, done some climb milling. Um, and it very rarely has a positive outcome. It almost always ends up with the part on the floor and uh, not a very good um, result. So it's a little bit counterintuitive to what I've done in the workplace for the last 12 to 14 years on a CNC machine. Even though I grew up on manual machines, you tend to um, inherit some different different ideas on how to approach things. So on the CNCs, we're climb milling all the time. It's very rare that we would conventional mill. Um, but then at home, I have to I have to watch I have to watch myself. So I was consistently taking uh, 50 to 60 thousandths cuts there on that A2, and then just getting a getting a measurement, getting the shoulder down. Nothing's really critical on this part, but um, you know, if you can measure, why not? Uh, it slows the process down a little bit, and um, for the most part, the speed doesn't matter in, in the home shop. So here I cut the, the front step. Eventually the indicator clamp will fit in there. So now this is just a basically a 90 degree chamfer mill that I, I end up using um, to cut some of the chamfers on the shoulders and there was one on the on the back side uh, that you really can't see. I, I could have done this a different way. I could have put the part on the angle. Um, it ended up being that the end mill that I have here is not big enough to do the chamfer as I laid it out, but my design, I'll do whatever I want. And so I just decided to make it smaller. So now basically all those top end features are complete, um, which is the bulk of the milling, uh, with the exception of the large chamfers on the other end and um, the large hole for the post. So now I'm just setting up here to do uh, the 45s. Um, nothing, again, precision about this. Just using a straight, straight edge parallel on the top surface of the vise to eyeball the scribe line straight. Um, do a little double check and um, I mean I've even noticed watching this that I know it's not perfect um, but again it really doesn't matter I could have indicated it I could have used a protractor uh, there's about a, a dozen ways I could have done that to make it super precision um, but I did it in 15 seconds with a parallel so um, and then I just uh, am, am going to mill down bit by bit uh, until I get to that scribe line and just eyeball, eyeball that end. Now this, this setup's a little more delicate. I don't have it um, really clamped super well. It's not resting on anything, so I did have to be a little light on the cutting. So there it's going to the line and uh, do the other side and that takes care of the chamfers. So now on the top surface there's, um, there's a drilled and tapped hole and a little slot and what this hole is for is the adjustment screw that will move the indicator clamp um, with the flexure on it. Um, so, again, there's really nothing 
critical about that um, other than uh, the location should be within um, a few thousandths of an inch and um, the the thread should be a, a good thread so this is my makeshift edge finder it's a quarter inch dowel pin so I just bump it against the edge there zero my indicator um, that you can see in the back and then I just move it in 125 and it's it's the uh, manual readout move it in 125 there's the edge and then I'll split the difference and find the center and um, it is pretty accurate another disadvantage of the Sherline and there's not too many but I, I do point them out um, just so people are aware of them is the the way the draw bar is if if you have any end mills that have any kind of length to them um, you have to almost cut them off because the the depth inside of the collet doesn't allow for much to go up inside of uh, the spindle so you're sort of uh, forced into taking lighter cuts with the longer tools which is fine for the most part I don't mind um, I do wish I had some shorter end mills though like to cut this slot I'm having to take about five thousandths per cut I might have went ten I don't really remember but I think it was five so um, it did take a, a good bit of time so here I'm just using a stub drill to uh, do the tap drill hole for a 1032 which is going to be uh, the thread of the adjustment screw it's actually a, a knob of sorts that I'll most likely make out of brass and also on, on this machine there is no quill therefore there's no drill handle so all of the drilling all of the z-axis motion is done by moving um, the hand wheel up and down so drilling is a little bit cumbersome as well so these holes here will match two more holes on the mating part which will be held together by a piece of spring steel which is the flexure which allows for the indicator to, to get some level of motion uh, in order to dial in the sensitivity so that's basically it for now more to come <laughs>